Good morning. The collect of today's Mass indicates that we are beginning a campaign of Christian service. A campaign of Christian service. It has a military tone to it, and indeed that is what this season is about. It is about organizing ourselves interiorly and exteriorly in the community to begin the works of, Christian, of, the, of the Christian, which are twofold, to acknowledge and to do penance for our sins and to worship God and love our neighbor through works of mercy. This is the campaign of Christian service, and we need the tools, the implements of the Christian to do the spiritual combat against the evils that we go out to combat or rather, I should say, that we turn inward to combat. So this is why we are here today, to begin this campaign of Christian service. Lent is 40 days. Now, because it's a dreary 40 days, everybody thinks that Lent is the longest season in the, in the church. Of course, it's not, but it, sometimes it feels that way. Because it can be hard. If you're doing it well... It's going to be hard. But if you remember why you're doing it, it can never be too difficult. So remembering the why of Lent is incredibly important. Now, we'll begin by addressing the, the mark that we will wear today. We do not wear ashes to show other people that we are fasting. We don't wear ashes to blow a trumpet or to stand in the synagogues and to pray or on street corners. We wear the ashes as a, unit, as a unifying symbol that we are beginning a season of penance. We don't wear ashes all, all Lent long. We fast all Lent long, but we don't wear ashes all Lent long. This isn't us walking around the streets saying to everybody, oh, look at how holy I am. This is us wearing a mark on our foreheads that reminds everyone that this season has come and that the church has called all faithful Christians to enter into this time to recognize that we have fallen short of the grace of God and we need to fall upon His mercy. The mercy not of a, of a, of a, a petulant child or an angry judge, but the mercy of a God who is our Father and loves us dearly. And so the sorrow of our penance does not come from fear of punishment. The sorrow of our penance comes from the sadness that we realize that comes with, a rel with the realization that we have saddened the one whom we love above all else. We've saddened our father. We've saddened our friend. We've saddened our bridegroom by our sin. And we will show him that we are willing to do whatever we need to to make that up to him. To be restored to that friendship with him that is won for us by the cross of Jesus Christ. The ending of this season. That's where this season leads us. It leads us to the cross, to the crucifixion. And so this season is rightly looked at as our carrying a cross of our sins to bring them to the feet of Jesus, to be crucified with him, to be drugged down into the fiery pits of hell, there to be left in anticipation of the glorious resurrection of our Lord Jesus. A campaign of Christian service. And what are these tools by which, we for, by which we wage the war against the evils in our life and in our society? They are threefold. They're the very marks of the Christian spiritual life. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. None of these can stand on their own, much like a three-legged stool. You look kind of ridiculous when you try to sit on a two-legged stool. Or even a one-legged stool. And yet how many of us only exercise one of these legs of the spiritual life? How many of us barely pray and think that that's a robust, lively spiritual life? You go to war with that and you're going to get killed. But instead, we Christians dedicated to this campaign of Christian service, dedicated to the lifelong campaign of Christian service, which is service to our Lord and God and, to love our, and the love of our neighbor, we know that in order to accomplish this in a way that is worthy of heaven, we must rely on all three. Prayer, by which we ascend our hearts to heaven, 
where we rely on the Holy Spirit with its unutterable groans to intercede for us, where we stand before the Lord in adoration and supplication and thanksgiving and in petition. By this we let the Lord know what we think we need and ask him to give us what we actually need. What we actually need to become saints, not what we actually need to be alleviated of our suffering, not what we actually need to have an easier life, not what we actually need to be enriched in this world, but what we actually need to become saints. That's the true effective response by God to our prayers, no matter how unworthy they are, to give us this day our daily bread. Then we fast. Fasting is the vehicle by which our prayers ascend to heaven. It's said, that, uh, it's said by, by the, 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 the great saints of the church, the mystics of the church, that no prayer is ever heard without fasting. The great prayer of the Mass that we say every day, is it not also accompanied by a universal fast? Do you all not abstain from food and, and drink an hour before you receive the covenant? How can, we, how can we imagine that the rest of our prayers, much, uh, much less powerful than the Mass, can alight to heaven without being accompanied with some sort of penitential fast or abstinence? And then finally, the, the, the fuel, if you will, that pushes this vehicle which carries our prayers to heaven is almsgiving. There's nothing that pleases the Lord more than the works of mercy. Nothing that pleases him more than mercy-mindedness to see in you that you are aware of the need to show mercy. Because that, my friends, is the mind of God. What pours out of a mind filled with charity is mercy. That's what almsgiving means. Oftentimes we think that it means carrying a chest of treasure into the church and laying it at the altar and saying, I've given my alms, or dropping my two cents or $200 or $2,000 into the basket as it comes by. That is a form of almsgiving. Recognizing that there's a need and contributing to that need in this particular way. But y'all, how many ways are there needs in this world? And how many ways do you have at your disposal to answer those needs? This season of Lent, as we call it a campaign of Christian service, is really nothing more than a training ground in which our practice is actually effective. Where we practice these three weapons at our disposal of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to apply them not simply to 40 days in Lent once a year, but to apply them to our entire life. If you've come today to get your ashes, to show others you're Catholic, and you've not come on Sunday and you won't come next Sunday, this is a futile, vain, and empty endeavor for you. But if this is a day of renewed vigor, of repentance, of apathy and apostasy and sinfulness. If this is a day where these ashes will mark a new beginning for you as they mark the beginning of this campaign of Christian service, then praise God. And I am so glad you're here, even if you have not been here in a long time. But don't fall into the trap of the hypocrite. Rend your hearts, not your garments. Change the way you've been living your life so that you can free yourself for a greater practice of these great Christian virtues, these needful instruments of our spiritual warfare, of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, so that finding our way through these 40 days to the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ, suffering with him his crucifixion and mourning his death, we may be worthy of a joyful Easter.